hunting. Men are hunters by nature, by how God fabricated them. Women are not created to hunt. Women's strength is in attraction, not in aggression. Did somebody get that? Women's strength is in what? Attraction, not in what? Aggression. And same thing with animal kingdom and co. Most of the females attract males, and they pick out of the males they attract. So as a woman, a man can marry who he wants. A woman can marry from who wants her. Did you understand that? A man can marry who he wants. But a woman will marry from amongst people that want her. She can't marry somebody that doesn't want her. She can't start chasing men. So what has been keeping young people in our generation single and it will affect them more? Because I see it's a, it's, a, it's a cultural issue. I need some examples. Sweetheart, you come. Are you single? Come. You will not be single for long after this example. Come. Easy, you are, sing- are you single? See, see, join. Come. I'll join two of you today. Pastor Jethro, bring communion and anointing oil. We we'll join them immediately. And what God has joined together, we can now. We'll talk to your parents after. Let's wear you now. I need one more lady. One more lady. Volunteer yourself. Anybody? One of you. Come now. Come. Yes. Come on stage. I need one more guy. Are you single? No, you're not. Where's your wife? She's in Canada. Eh? We don't talk like that here. So find a way to resolve that matter. Do you understand? Um, find a way to resolve it. Okay, I need one more guy that is single. This big man, you are single. Pastor Jeffrey, what are we going to do about it? But well, why are they even married? What's the problem? You're looking for your spec. These are the problems. Because on what reason should a grown man really? If you understand, you see, if you understand the purpose of marriage, eh, let me talk to the men. Because I know women, you can't marry yourself. Let me talk to the men. If you understand the purpose of marriage, eh, trust me, you will not be single one extra day. When I got married, I was like, I wish I married earlier. There is, you, you don't fully enter your manliness and manhood until you marry. I'm not, and I'm, I'm not talking about cultural pressure. No, I'm talking about society pressure. I'm talking about there's a level of responsibility and focus you begin to get when you start to take care of another that a single man does not have. There's what it does to you. There's what accountability does to you. There's what responsibility does to you. Are you here, somebody? You mature in a different way, trust me. And the blessings a woman carries. Ay, 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 ay. The blessing a woman carries. If you know what God put in women, for God that says it's not good for man to be alone, how do you think? Do you think he's joking? Because if you don't like me, you can leave me. The creator of the earth, God himself, Baba, God. He opened his mouth and said, it's not good. I'm not, I'm not the one that said it. He says, it's not good for you to be alone. You think he doesn't know what he's saying? You know, most of the time when God talks, we can't fully get the full... The, the, the statement is deep. God said, look, boy, it's not good. Whatever you think you're enjoying now, eh? You are missing too much compared to what you have. God said, it's not good for you to be alone. The same God said, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. Can't you see this script? I bet you already wrote it. I'm not, I'm not talking about societal pressure. Forget what people are saying. I'm telling you now by blicker. I told you you have to renew your mind. Every young man should marry as fast as you can. But learn about marriage. I'm not saying just marry for the sake. You know, when you know the purpose, you marry well. And, and women, women carry so much favor. Carry so much blessing. God equipped them for it. Especially a good woman. I'm not saying go and marry any devil you see on the road. Yeah, because when I say this is book confused, that pastor, hey, that's not my experience. Because you are not, you are choosing wrong. If you marry a good woman, Bible said a virtuous woman, not any woman. He said a virtuous woman is a crown. DJ, give me that scripture. So I don't know why a man should be above 23, 24 and not be married. I'm serious. I'm serious. 24 is too young. 
Your mate in Animal Kingdom has grandchildren. Your mate in Animal Kingdom already has grandchildren. <laughs> Your mate in developed countries, by 18, they leave their parents' house. That exposes them to responsibility quick. When well, Nigeria, it can be 28, you are still sucking your mother's breast. At 28 in Nigeria. They are still sending you a message. Go and buy biscuits, go and buy milk. Go and buy sugar. They are still running your errand. You are running your errand. You can't lie long, go and buy bread at your age. But your mate in Silicon Valley, at 18, 19, they are already billionaires. <laughs> they are developing things that are changing the world. But you are still carrying to go and buy bread at the junk store. With your short knickers. <laughs> so give me that scripture, Jerry. No, no, no. I want to say the virtuous man is a crown. Listen to the scripture I put up. The virtuous man is a crown to her husband's head. So, so there's so much. For God to say it's not good for to be alone, there's so much you put in a woman. That's why for those that are married, if you're not really partnering with your wife, and that's, hopefully that's the thing we will share in this, in this series. If you're not really partnering with your wife, you're wasting the whole concept of marriage. You shouldn't have married. If you're not going to partner with your wife. You do things, start telling her. You do things, start sharing with her. You're wasting the whole concept of marriage. You should have been a single. What you need is staff, not wife. Because you want to your job is shouting at, go and bring this thing. What do you know? So you that know something, you marry somebody that don't know something. That means you two don't know anything. Say, this woman is a witch. Thank you, Mr. Wizard. Because where did you go that you met witch? Which is on the meeting, Kovun. For you to marry witch, you're a wizard. Say, this woman is a fool. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fool, for marrying Mrs. Fool. Yes, look at this. A what? Did they say a fine woman? Did they say a fashionable woman? Which woman are they talking about here? Virtuous. So I'm not saying go and marry any girl you see on the streets. They say it's a virtuous woman. He say what? Crown. So what? Husband. But there's one that maketh ashamed and is what? Rottenness to his bones. So if you want to marry those type that want to use LV bag they can't afford, that want to wear expensive wig on an empty head, if that's the type you go and marry, of course they'll bring rottenness to your bones. That's not who I'm talking about. Who I'm talking about is that a virtuous woman. And what that means is that when you marry right, you will see a certain kind of promotion. Your life just goes up. When you marry right, me, I've experienced it. It's in scripture, but beyond scripture, me, I've experienced it. I know people like Jethro and some other people here have experienced it. Mr. Shuko and all these people, we all knew how we were when we were single and when we were married. It's a different ball game. There's a favor that comes with it. It's biblical. So, they've told young girls, let me close for this service. All this is intro. From next Sunday, we'll start dealing with the seven purposes of marriage. And I'll share one in each service. So even if you attend only one service, make sure you get the message of the other service. It's free on YouTube and all that. And please get the books. I'll be signing the books. So bring the books next Sunday. In between the services, I'll be signing outside. I can autograph it for you. So they've told young girls, all of you face this way. Only you face straight. The rest of you face. They've told young girls that you two can chase a man. You two choose who you want. It's only men that prefer. If you see a man... So they've bastardized and bombarded this young girl's mind with speck. So she too has speck. She too is looking for love. She too thinks marriage is about her. It's about making you happy. You know, there's no way the Bible says marriage makes you happy. Marriage wasn't designed to make you happy. You see all these things, they're important things. Marriage wasn't designed to make you happy. It's designed to make you better. When you are better, you can now be happy. But the purpose of marriage... It's not, so if you enter marriage looking for happiness, you will leave that week. Because that week you will discover you are not happy. It's the first week you will discover it. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. There's no way to say marriage makes you happy. It's like school. No school is open to make you happy. It's a university of so and so. Our goal is your happiness. Have you seen that before in this life? The school makes you better. That process is rigorous. You, in fact, my daughter just, one of my daughters just went to one university. From the entrance, they stop the parents at the gate. You start going to regis registration alone. You have not started school. Registration alone. Go and sign this one here. Go and sign that one there. You are carrying your big box here. Is, is that happy? Then you start attending lectures. There's some lectures they like coming during their own lecture legs. 
Some do that one very early. Some don't even do it at all. They say, read, buy the textbook, read it. When you come, I will ask you if you have read it. Nothing about that is making you happy. But if you follow the rigors and you pass, and you pass well, then you have a chance at being happy with, with the things certificates can give you. Do you see that? But the school is not set up for your happiness. If you set up for your happiness for a day, you come and say, oh, how are you? What can we serve you? That would be the first day you come. And these people are thinking marriages. Of now I enter, <laughs> my husband will be attending. No. No. These people are living marriages. Because the, the, the expectation they even had from beginning is bad. That's why people are living. It's the expectation. Why are white people coming to Nigeria when Nigerians are going to Canada and UK? Why are they coming here? They have prepared their expectation. They've already told them from whom? This place you are going, no light. Oh. So the white man is not shocked when there's no light. He was told. They've already told the white man from when he's coming that uh, there's no security. You carry on Mopo. He's aware. He's aware that for things to move here, oh, you must be greasing palms. One white guy that came to do something for us as a church. He's a white guy. So, so he's a German guy. And when, when, see, when he was at the border, I said, I'm at the immigration, I said, hope you don't have issues and everything. He said, no. That he just put like 20 euros in his passport when he was submitting it. And everything started moving fast. He's a white, no, I'm not talking about, he's a white person. He lives in a country that has sanity and rules. But his expectations are prepared when it comes to Nigeria. That's what makes people live marriage. It's not the rigor. Nigeria is tough. But people that have proper expectations. They're not bothered. It's people that are shocked. But, hey, then take light. No. Even NEPA, they use gen. NEPA, the PSN, they have gen. You say they take light. No. Somebody in Lagos now saying there's traffic. That's not the news. It's when road free that is news. Traffic is the constant. Road being free in the news. Oh boy, road free. Oh. Goes, <laughs> not there's traffic. I don't know if you guys know what I'm saying. So expectation is what makes the difference. This is why people are living marriages. Because they came to think, I'm going to be happy. The way here will make me happy. No, marriage is not for happiness. I will show you the seven purposes of marriage from next week. It's not for, there's no happiness inside. But if you do it well, if you follow your purposes well, there's a chance. You'll be happy. But that's not the goal. So they bombarded her. Find your speck. Find the guy that will make you melt. Find the handsome man that is your speck. So they've told her that. So you know what she's doing? Instead of her to wait and attract people and choose from somebody that wants her, she wants to pick who she wants. So she has seen this boy. What's your name? Joseph. She has seen Joseph. So Joseph is a speck. And they've told her she too can chase men. So she's now chasing Joseph. The only problem is that Joseph doesn't like her. He too has speck. So Joseph is chasing this one. This is her speck. This is his speck. So she's chasing him. He's chasing her. What, what's happening is that she's chasing him with money. Because women are not trained hunters. Men are trained hunters. Men understand that there's a bait and catch approach. If you want to catch a bird, animal, you give them a bit, like fish. You are not giving them your whole food. You are giving them a small bit. Then you catch the whole animal. Because men are trained hunters. Women are not trained hunters. They are lovers. So she doesn't give him bait. She gives him her soul. She's not a hunter. She's a lover. So she gives him her soul. Gives him her body. Gives him her money. Gives him her whole soul. This is why breakup pains women more than men. Because when she's giving you, she's giving you all. Men know that it's a bait approach. You give small fish to catch the big fish. Because the big fish is the, when we set the dining table, you are the meal. <laughs> but women don't know this hunting. Because she's a lover. She's not a trained hunter. She's a trained lover. So she gives him everything. His, her soul, her body, her money. But he's enjoying those things, but he really doesn't want any permanent relationship. So he's enjoying. This is why some men are single for a very long time. They're enjoying all the benefits of marriage. But they're still looking for the one. Oh, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Many men already have wife. Only that they are not legally wedded. <laughs> she's supplying all the things. In her she's cooking, washing clothes, helping him with his life, giving him money, everything, sex, everything. But he's, that's not who he is. He's still looking for the one. She's not the one. He's just enjoying these facilities. 
because, because she's chasing him. So he's enjoying it, but that's not where his eyes are. He wants this one. Unfortunately, this one that he wants, what's her problem? She has spec. So she's not seeing anything attractive. Because when you have spec and you're so, you, 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 you fantasize so much about that spec, your mind sends you signals that no other person is fine. Your emotions send you signals that I'm not attracted. Most people say I'm not attracted to. Your emotions don't work independently of themselves. They are only reflecting what's going on in your thoughts. Oh, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Your emotions don't have a mind of their own. So when you say I'm not attracted to what you mean is that you have so trained your mind to find something else attractive. It's not because that person is not good. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've shared this story here, how the first time I ever went to London, you know, that time there was no burger in Nigeria, only meat pie. Only Mr. Biggs had meat pie. There's no burger. All these people are eating burger up and down. You're very privileged. Ask Lawrence, now in our own time, it's only meat pie. And that meat pie, you can't even eat one. Three or four people share it. Now you see small children carrying one full meat pie only. Huh? It's madness. This is why the economy is not working. <laughs> only one child eats one meat pie. That time you dare not. One meat pie, three of them go share them. Equal and the person will share, no being go pick. The person will share, now the other person go pick. These are legal issues. Heavy legal issues. So, we have been dreaming of, we have been seeing meat pie, you see it only on TV, in adverts, or on magazines. Because those days, there was not so much internet, so you, 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 people would travel and bring magazines, and you see meat burger, Big Mac. So I was saying that the first day I travel, the first thing I'll do is to eat burger. And truly, I went to London for the first time. Luckily for us, near my hotel, there was a McDonald's rest, um, joint there. So immediately we dropped our bag. We were already even hungry. We just went straight to the McDonald's. I know they have other things on the joint. We were just pointed that that one, give me. This is what I came from Lagos to eat. They brought the burger out. I opened, the expectation was high. I kid you not. High expectation. I opened my mouth. I beat it. Zero taste. It was as if I was eating plywood. <laughs> Zero test. I was so disappointed. This is what causes divorce. I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed. But I saw white people around me eating it. and mm, <laughs> Delicious. Why were they enjoying it? They have been programmed to like something that has no salt and no pepper. Me from Nigeria, I've been programmed. I'm just Igbo by name, but by culture, I'm more Yoruba than Igbo. <laughs> because I was born and bred in Lagos. I've lived all my life here. And I'm used to eating, you know, those Amala that they sell over gutter. If you don't cross gutter <laughs> to buy that Amala, it's not authentic. Any gutter that is inside AC. Ri any Amala inside AC. Ri Amala. You must pass gutter. There must be gutter there. And there can't be AC. And the woman that's selling must be fat. And she won't wear clothes. She's just singlet. You will see all her stretch mark. They are Malago sweets. And they are not serving you. You are picking your own plates. And joining queue. You, sometimes you even have to wash plates. If plate has finished. You wash your own plates. Then they give you tally number. And you queue. And fight for your right. That's how you know sweet Amala. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's how I was raised. Eating those kind of food. I got there, zero taste. Have you seen the way they eat their, their own steak? A meal they call steak. It's just meat. When you cut it, you see blood. As in the cow is alive. The cow is, they, yeah, they cut the cow. The cow is alive. Blood. Blood will come out. No choco. They are eating the food. Blood will come out. And they are saying, mmm, yummy. We, we are programmed to like suya. It's the same cow, but the way our own is programmed is suya. It must be very dry. What's the difference? It's programming. No one is better than the other. So, the people you are saying you don't like is just how you are programmed. 
you've watched a certain kind of thing all your life, and one of the pictures stuck to you. And you've been carrying that picture about. So that's what happened to this girl. She's been carrying that picture about. The picture has described this guy. He has beard. He's tall. He has this fashion sense. He has, so this is the image. So if any other person that doesn't fit this image come to her, she said, he's godly. He's born again. He has a good job. He loves me. But I'm not, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> feeling key you there. Feeling key you there. <laughs> Is that what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? She's saying that. She's saying that because she has been so programmed to fall in love. If you know what love really is, you know we don't fall inside it. Do you fall into being a manager in a bank? So I was just going as a fellow. I now fell into being manager in Zenith Bank. No. We don't fall in love. We walk in love. Are you here, Sandra? You never hear the Bible say we fall in love. The Bible say we walk in love because it's a continuous promise. It's not a state of the past. It's a promise of the future. That I will continue to love you. Does somebody get what I'm saying? So the biggest thing ladies can do for themselves, and I have to end here because of time, the biggest thing ladies can do for themselves in particular is to remove all the unnecessary speck. Keep yourself as neutral as possible. You will see that you will find your caption, the amount of men you will find attractive will become bigger. I shared how my wife married. This is why in the olden times, it's rare to find people single at a certain age. It's rare. Not that idea exists, but it's not as common as it is today. Today, now, it's, it's common. If a woman is 35, not married. Not a, nobody's surprised. Those days, 35. It's a big, it's a national issue. If a lady is 35 and not married that time, you say, your whole family is together. But today, it's common to see a man 40, not married. Everybody's going their way. It's common to see a woman 35, not married. Everybody's going their way. You can't try that time. Because they understood how marriage works. You see, this love, look for love and look for this. It's a recent development, though. Some of you don't know. It's a recent, it wasn't so. Just a few generations back. In fact, most of you, your parents' generation, they didn't, nobody talk about love. They talk about real stuff. Rent. School fees. Real stuff. I told you, I asked my mother how she got married. She said she was in, in our fellowship one day in uh, the old church. And the leader of the fellowship, the mature man, married man, brought my, my father to her house. And told her that um, this man, because the, my dad has asked the, the, the elder of the fellowship, among the girls you have, which one is godly? You see how they married that time? We were looking for spec. They were taking get out three times. They have to check whether how are you. In most cases, you even sleep with her first tester. This is the nonsense young people are doing. And my brother, if you test one guy, you know, sweet, you test another one. After a while, you become a professional tester. Oh, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Many men are stuck in testing the sweets. Have you ever tasted somebody's food that is not your own? You know it's sweeter than when they give you your own. Oh, you don't know? Why well, you just take a spoon or two? Ooh. If they say give you your own, it means you go pay. You go clean plates. There are other things associated with it. That testing is sweet. So many men are in perpetual testing. And guess who are surrendering themselves for testing? So the men are just testing. You take out for three days, test. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. You taste another one. That time, they don't waste time. I need which of the girls are, you are the one that is the pastor. Who are good girls? You pointed a few probably. They pick one. You came. They are just meeting for the first time. If my that elder told my, my, my mother, eh, this man just came from Lagos and he's looking for a wife and he said he wants to marry you. So what do you say? It's not that you go for you answer now. <laughs> this is my mother's story. She said, eh, she looked at him. She said, it's okay. In a few months, they were married. In months, no more than five, six months. I'm not saying you have to do exactly that, but there's a concept. We, we, we should add the knowledge we have now to the right principles that they have. But our own, our knowledge is taking us away from the right principles. They're all married. Simple and short. So, she, you see, if she had so much spec, do you think that guy would have worked? She said, mm -hmm. it's not the height that I was. There's a picture I have, Pastor. It's not this height, and it's not this com exact complexion. 
The guy came from Lagos, he has a job. You don't need about three or four important things to check. Most of the things you are adding to your list are a waste. So, sister has been given so much spec, she's now told to go and hunt. Anybody telling you to hunt is lying to you. They should go and tell you the stories of girls that have gone to hunt, how it went. They get used and useless. They get used. They don't hawk diamond ring on traffic. They don't hawk that. No, it's not like no matter how much business is moving in traffic, you will never see diamond ring. Diamond ring, diamond ring. Buy your diamond ring here. Number one, you expose it to be stolen. You, you also reduce the value. Because when you're hawking, pricing in Express has no formula. Have you seen real people that buy in Express? How they price? Do you have any friend like that that's good in buying Express? The price of the price they talk at the shock. Somebody selling glasses says 7,000. You see the guy inside, say, Let me give you 500 naira. Eh? <laughs> me, even me, where be your friend? I shock, say, eh? <laughs> And true, true, you see price, you know. The guy will say, Okay, bring two five. He said, No, lie, lie. Now, seven, nine, 700, I will give you last. And true, true, the guy said, I bring 900. I said, Pricing in Express has no formula. Once you bring yourself to Express, I can price you anything. You will never see Rolls Royce going from house to house. Begging people that, what do you think? Will you try it? Will you buy it? Your cars, they don't try. Are you here? Because it's tried. It's tested. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? There is a self-respect you carry yourself with. By the time you go hunting, you have exposed yourself to any price they call. As a woman, you are not designed to reduce yourself like that. Let a man want you. He needs to want you because that wanting you is part of how he will value you. If you are the one that is chasing him, he will find it hard because he's a project person. He's a project-driven person. So if you chase him, you have even eliminated one of the most important parts of his life. You are going to be so despised. And a man that can't lead... In starting the family, you, you are the one that ch- chased him. You toasted him. You caught him. Then inside the marriage, you want him to suddenly start to lead. The experience he has had so far is that you are the leader. So you will still get back to being frustrated when he can't make any decision. Anything you ask him, he says, I don't know. Because <laughs> he has never made one decision when two of you are together. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You value yourself. I told you that I'm a car person. And I, I, when I travel abroad and there's a car show, or even a, a, I go to most car show rooms just to look at it. But when there's a car show, I Google. I'm very committed. By the time I Google, I know if there's any car show or anything. Sometimes, sometimes vintage cars, old school cars, they're doing a show. Sometimes brand new cars. So I traveled one time to Dubai, I think, and there was a car show. So as usual, I went for the car show. And me, I'm a car person. So I entered all the, they will show the new cars of the coming year. So I, new, new cars. So I entered. Every car. I entered Toyota. I entered Nissan. They started for me, started on it. They showed me the pictures. Everywhere I was enjoying the cash show. Until I reach uh, Maybach. The stand for Maybach. If you don't know Maybach, Maybach is the luxury version of Mercedes Benz. Now, Mercedes Benz is already a luxury car. Then, when they have a luxury version, so you should know the quality they are talking about. Maybach. So, when I got there, I just the match as usual. The way I enter all the car shops, ah, they just stopped me at the door. Say, Where are you going? I said, Ah, is it no? Car show we are doing. I'm going to look at the car. <laughs> they say, I'm sorry. You cannot go in. Not into the car. I can't enter the guy. I say, is it not on display? Uh, they say, yes, it's on display. But this part of this show is strictly by invitation. That do you have an invitation? I said, the Lord invited me. <laughs> they say, do you have invitation? Because they know that people that buy me back are not just passing by. Why are you selling some bread? Somebody passing by Gala. Somebody passing by that wasn't thinking of Gala. Come, just see Gala and buy. But they don't buy Ferrari like that. You don't pass by and just see Ferrari and just begin to check how much they your hand. <laughs> no, 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 no. The money for Ferrari, you're going to talk to your bankers. Because even them need to gather them. From their different branches. They stop you. Say you can't enter. It's strictly by invitation. 
Do you think if I'm coming there next time, I won't respect myself? But women don't know that. Women think the more open and free I am, the better. No, 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 no. Put some class and value in yourself. But leave your options wide and open. And you see that God will connect you in Jesus' name. God bless you. So all of you exchange numbers with yourself. Come over. You see the look that side. We don't close. All of you, after service, exchange numbers and meet yourself. Are you guys coming for salt tomorrow? Wait, come. Are you coming for salt tomorrow? If they think, that's why he's not married. 